My name is Laura Rowley. I'm a professional animal communicator, and I've been a horsewoman for all of my adult life. This career path was a big surprise for me. It started about 25, 30 years ago when I was out watering my horse lump, and I had dumped all the buckets in the stalls, and I heard very clearly in my head, hey, I'm thirsty. And I thought, that's weird, I just watered the horses. Walked back into the barn, down the aisle, sure enough, I missed one. The horse's bucket was empty. I filled it up and he gulped the water. And I thought, that's very strange because I heard him say to me he was thirsty. So that started a whole trajectory of a career that surprised me because I didn't really actually know I had the talent, the intuition and the empathy required to do this sort of thing. In fact, I'd never even heard of it before. Since I'm a longtime horsewoman, I have lots of friends with lots of animals and horses. And I was able to help them by understanding what was going on with the animal in a way that surprised everyone, including myself. Eventually, pretty quickly, within a year or two, I had to turn it into a business because I was really busy with helping people understand the nature of what was going on. Was it medical? Was it behavioral? I work with owners, riders, trainers, veterinarians, and try to hone in the information so that they can do whatever they need to move the relationship forward or the animal to get healthier in some way that they aren't understanding because it's usually a little complicated. Let me talk to you about a couple of my clients. For instance, I worked with a horse this week that was down in his stall. No one could understand what the problem was. He had no symptoms and his blood work was pretty good. So they were looking at one thing that had been a historical problem with colic this horse but it turns out he had fallen when he had gotten out of the trailer and he had damaged his throat and uh, through scans they recognized that actually he had trouble swallowing uh, and they needed to look elsewhere and treat him differently so by guiding the veterinarian that way he was able to take that information and reestablish a more accurate diagnosis one woman called me on the phone to chat the other day and her daughter's pony had started to buck and act horrible, scaring the kid, scaring them all. Uh, the child is only six years old and she's on a bucking horse. So they couldn't figure any, out anything that was wrong with the pony. So I asked the pony, what's troubling you? So she showed me a picture, the pony showed me a picture and said, watch this, this is my trouble, of the saddle and how it was fitting. It was pinching at the withers and they needed a different fit from what they had. The horse had gotten fitter, he'd gotten a stronger back, his muscles had changed and the saddle hadn't changed with them. So he just was too uncomfortable to proceed. So he was saying basically, I can't do this unless they help me do this and tell them I need help. So I did and of course they're ordering a new saddle. So I've told you a little bit about what I do in my work. There's a lot more to explore about the interesting ideas behind talking to animals, even if you are scratching your head and wondering if it's possible. You can read the July issue of Mid-Atlantic Horse and learn more about what I do.